Okay. I do not have any there. Hello, peoples of YouTube. We're waiting for Brandon. Right, Connor? You mean steal a brim. Uh, unless, 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 Connor, you're ready to roll. But I think you won't wait for Brandon, do you? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, who cares? We can get through the topic. Okay. We went over modems last time you were here, right? Connor, you know what modem is, right? Uh, yes. You have the notes written down, right? Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to cover this up and you're going to tell me. All right, here. Modem is something that converts data, transfers it, like, uh -huh. from a phone, cable, mm -hmm. uh, fiber optic, and what else is there? There's, oh yeah, Ethernet data. It, tur it turns it into Ethernet data, right? Yes, it turns it into Ethernet data. Connor, do you see these things on the poles out there? No, I don't. No, I don't think you see those. Okay. So, keep in mind I have a bad toothache, been this way all day, it sucks, so if I get a little cranky, you know, throw, throw a few pins across the... You sound like my grandpa. Throw, throw a few pins across the room, you know, you, you, you're, you know why that is. <laughs> so, that is a phone line, right? That's a phone line coming in, and Connor, he looks like he's coming in with a stereo system or something. Whoa. <laughs> are you, you going to entertain us today? You did forget something. <laughs> Whoa. Sure, you brought in a stereo system in there? Okay. Yeah. You can set that up just as long as you're not. I won't interface. You can, I don't know, you can party. You guys can party in here, do what you want. Because I'm a cool teacher. Just as long as you know your your stuff. And I think, I think, um, I forgot your name already. Brandon, yeah. I think Brandon, Brandon L. knows what a modem is by now, do you? Yeah. What's, what's this cable right here? RJ11. Uh-huh. Okay, that's that's an, that's the name of the, the jack. What's the name of the cable? Um, cat 5E. That's not a cat cable. That's, not a, cat that's cable. a phone cable. cable. Yep. yep. Good job. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Brandon, Thanks. I don't know if you, there's an outlet over there if you want to set up over there. But this is kind of like where I'm... <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean. You can set up afterwards or just, you know, try not to be in the wall. I'll do as quick as I can. The way. <laughs> Come on, get with the game. Okay. So now we have a, a whiteboard. Uh -huh. right, Con right, Connor? Yeah, all right. Am I going to draw or something? Whiteboards for routers and modems. So, you have your phone cable that travels along the side of the road, right? This will come into your house. It will go to, uh, you guys know this phone jacks? Mm -hmm. You'll get a phone cable, and you'll plug it into a modem. Basically, that goes out to Ethernet, see? That's basically a simple summary of a modem, basically. Modem architecture. Brandon, you're going to care what am I going to do? Can you uh, grab this and put it as far over at the end of the table you can? Oh my goodness. Put it at the corner of the table we Oh my gosh. Well, are you going to keep this system in here or something? Yeah. Nice. So that's basically that's how the modem is. What are those like stick thingies? Those are the phone lines outside. You know those along the road? Yep. I'm not much of an artist. You got, can you guys tell that? Huh? I, I, Brandon, you are. I couldn't even tell. <laughs> okay. What's that thing? It's like modder. What is it? Modem. Uh, that's supposed to be modem. Modem, I don't, know if, I don't know if you can really tell, but yeah, that, that's, that's a modem, okay? <laughs> right there. Then, you have that one cable going out, right? That gives you Ethernet or CAT, right? Yep. Where would you plug this in next? Hmm, into your clients. Mm -hmm. But how would you spread those clients out so you can get more connections? Because that's just one connection. You can get a hub or a... Switch. A hub switch. A switch. You get rid of hubs. No. Nah. Yeah, I know they're obsolete since 15 years ago. Yeah. You plugged it. You can also, if you're on a, if you're on a home network, what would you use instead of a switch? Unless you're cool, you would use a router, right? For sure, there's all kinds. Have you guys heard of Netgear, D-Link, all them? Belkin, Linksys. Ring any bells? Motorola. I don't know if they build it. I know they make cable modems. I don't know. They, they probably make routers. 
But yeah, you plug that into a router or a switch, then you plug all your happy computers into it, right? Yeah. Happy computers. That's how simple. So if you ever shown a video, we could use this. So because you can't, you can barely hear on the freaking uh, the computer itself. Well, if you're on YouTube, just crank the, the audio up. Hey, this is this is um, Connor's favorite section. Cat cables. Is it? Okay. You have your um. That's the cat's pajamas. You have your cat three cable. I'm gonna get myself if I can get myself a red marker. Cat three. Throw it away. It can only handle up to ten megabits per second. That's, that's why I have on my computer. A actually, cat 3 cable. Actually, a cat 2 I That cable over there is a cat 5e. We'll get into that. Is there such a thing as a cat 1, cat 2? Uh, there probably was at one time, but these are the main networking cables, okay? So, if you have a cat 3 cable, what are you going to do? Throw it away. Throw it away. So, you know, exit that thing out. Brandon, your right. head's like all over the... There we go. Yeah. It looks like you have it set up now. Nope. <laughs> Not quite yet. Me and Connor want to get as much in with the time we have. Just wait, man. It'll happen. Okay. I don't know how I'm going to step around here. Then you have a Cat5 cable, right? Cat5 can handle up to 100 megabit per second. How long can a Cat5 go? And lengthwise, it's on the board. 25 feet. I don't know. Uh, where? Cat 5 cable, how long can a cat 5 cable? 100 meters per second. Per second? No. We're talking about length. 100 meters. Length, though. Yeah, 100 meters. meters. You're going to take it from the switch to a client. You're going to run that cable. The farthest that cable can go to be optimal, that means to be Good. up to standard, is 100 meters. Okay? How long is 100 meters? Does anybody know? Uh, from here to where? Oh, uh, I thought you meant distance. Feet. Yeah. 300 feet. It's 300 yards. Okay, say, say our switch is right here. 1,200 feet. Okay. 900. Put this in perspective, guys. No. Say no we have reasons. a switch right here, right? <laughs> we're going to plug this Cat 5e cable, or we're going to say Cat 5 because is what we're using right now. We're going to plug this Cat 5e cable into our switch right here. How long can this go? Like, Say a room. Um, can I? Try an audio real fast. Maybe. Do you think this could probably reach Miss Thor's room? No, no problem. can't. Miss Who's? No. Morris? Yeah. From here, this cable, 100 meters. Uh, oh, well, it feels 100 meters. Like it. Well, if it was 100 meters. Say it was 100 meters. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Then yes, it'd reach. Yeah. So you can, you guys can get your um. Basically, understand that. Brandon, are you still? S you can get the music later. I I just want to test something, just like an audio file or something. And you can just whip up something real fast. Well, if you have it, yeah, that's that's headphone out. It'll work. Okay, but I just want to make sure that it's all working as a surround. He will. He's wanting to get off topic. Hold on. I'm not wanting to. He wants to. You can tell I just want to get off. There. Well, first off, the volume's muted, okay? Okay. There. Hold on. That's right. Let's look again. Okay, okay thanks. <laughs> but, Carl, you still writing this stuff down? So, Cat 5 can handle up to 100 megabit. And, um, you got it. Okay, sit down. You got it. I'll try to be mean, I just want to get this done. It's going to be. Get out of my face, damn thing. Okay, hold on. I wasn't done. There. Okay. okay. Bring. Take a seat. <laughs> I know you want to do this. You'll do it at the end, man. When, when you get the when you got the stuff. Do you have this stuff written down? You there? Cat cable. Cat five. Okay. So cat five cable. It holds up to only 100 megabits per second. That means you're not going to get a gigabit connection off that. That, that cable can't handle it. They can only go up to 100 meters, which is from here. I don't know. I, I say they'd reach my stores room, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So this is what this is what the cat cable usually looks like. You guys see these cables, right? These are a pretty rainbow, right? So if you want to say, oh, this blue one, or this green, green one, I, am I colorblind? This green one, you can be like, oh, that goes to Miss Sora's computer. So when you're back at the switch, you'll be like, oh, that green one, I know where that goes. You know? I know where it goes. Yeah, I know where that thing goes. Whoa. Then you have the currently popular Cat5e. That's what that cable right there is, wasn't it? Remember you guys read it yesterday? You have the Cat5e. Guess what it can handle up to? It can handle up to 1,000 megabits or, or one, gigabit one gigabit per second. Per second. It also has a better twisted pair. What's that mean? Well bound together. Yeah. The cables inside are twisted better or twisted tighter. And making it tighter means less interference, which means a better connection. It also is sheathed hev more heavily. That means this coating that goes around it is more thick, thicker, less interference. Okay? So it has sheathed and heavy, heavy duty shielding. And it can only go up to 100 meters as well. I don't think they've, they, they need to improve these cables. They need, to, they need to go farther, don't they? Yeah. Tomorrow's. Then you have the Cat 6. That's what I have on my, plugged into my laptop. It can handle up to 10 gigabit per second. How many megabits is that? Just add zero onto that, right? 10,000. Yep. yep. It's a, it has a lot better twisted pair. That means it's it's even more tighter. Okay? Okay. And better shielding. It looks like they're trying to improve that. It can only go up to 100... Now, watch this, guys. 100 meters for 1 gigabit. 55 meters for 10 gigabits. I wonder why that is. Probably because if you're going to have that cable doing 10 gigabit a lot, that 55 meters is probably the only optimal you know, length that you can probably get out of it. I mean, if you go farther, you're probably going to see some drop in the speed. It's not going to be up there where you want it as standard. Then you have the Cat5A, or the Cat6A. It handles up to 10 gigabit natively. What's that mean? That means it's definitely built to handle that speed all the time. It can, it can handle it. That's good, good cable. A lot better shielding, and it's a future thing, right? We don't have it yet, but actually, you can, you can buy it, but you don't, it's really, really rare, and it's expensive, okay? So you have the Cat, the Cat 6A. That's some good cable there. I want Cat 6A. I know. We should have those on our, on our switches and everything, shouldn't we? Now, like I said, on those trunk connectors on the switch, I told you to use a Cat 6 cable because all that, all that stuff goes to that one port, right? All those connections. So you want a, a good quality cable, right? Makes sense. It's all common sense at the end of the day. So you guys have that written down in your notes, what the cat cables are, you can go back and brag, oh, I know all the cat cables, huh? But there's a lot of other versions um, as well, like there's Cat6B, six, um, there's Cat six B, there's etc. These are the main ones, okay guys? You just got to the main ones. You're not going to see those. You're probably going to see them, but they're really rare, you know? Really rare. That, that cable right there, which one is it? Got 5E. And that's the most popular right now, okay? That's the cable. If you go to Lowe's and get it in a big spindle, most popular, okay? We'll get into that later. Have that written down, Connor? You look like you're writing. Almost. What are you writing? Last, last, last yeah, few last, ones? last part. Okay. And did I mention, Brandon, I have a toothache all day? And it, really? So if I'm a little cranky today, yeah, it's because I'm talking and, you know, Blame it on that pain. Ball. Hey. <laughs> okay. Comparing cat twisted pair. Now this is inside of it, so let's let's look into this, okay? This is a cat 6E cable. That's a little bit more advanced. We didn't really go that. It's not popular. But you see how, how twisted that is? Yeah. And then look at this cat 5 cable. See how loose that is? Then you see a little green strand on the cat 6E on the white part. And then on the 5, it's not. You see it? Well, that's white. That's a white and green cable. We'll get into that, okay? Don't. Don't let the color of the cables confuse you, okay? Just, do you see how tightly that's twisted compared to that inside of that thing? So you can tell. See, here it is again. First, first it again here. Make sense? That's common sense. It's inside of that thing. Those wires are twisted a lot tighter. Less interference. Okay? Why? Uh-oh. I don't know. Um, that again. screw you, you thing. We don't want to scan. We don't care about your scan. 
Yes. There's a virus. There we go. So you guys basically got that down, you know? I know. Just have like two wires really loose and then two wires really tight. Makes sense? I think that's what? Ethernet! What is Ethernet, guys? This cable is an Ethernet cable. But if you want to be, say, in technical terms, it's a CAT 5E cable. Basically, all these CAT cables, these network cables, they're called Ethernet cables. Okay? So it's wired networking. It's the best connection and fastest. I wonder why that is. Probably because you actually have a physical thing. You're not having to worry about the airwaves. It's direct connection, basically. It's right to that switch, you know? So you get the best connection. Cable is called CAT followed by the version, right? You have CAT 6, CAT 5, CAT 3, garbage. But you get that. They come in a variety of lengths, right? You can go to Best Buy, Walmart, even Lowe's probably has them. I mean, they probably do. But um, even Walmart. you can get a 6 foot one or you can get a 20 foot one, depending on what you want. Okay? Now, if you're somebody like me, you would go to Lowe's or some other, like Home Depot or somewhere, somewhere you get a spindle of cat cable. And what that does is you can cut it, you can make your own cable, right? So, or they come on a stool which you can make cables. So once you have this, you're just getting this, you're just getting a big spindle of this right here. Okay? You're gonna get you're getting a big spindle of that cat 5 e cable. What you do then is you get these jacks. What are these jacks called? RJ45. You can buy those in like a pack of 50. Then you get your crimper. You cut, you, um, you cut it where you, how long you want it. You um, take the twisted pair, put them in the correct order, make sure they're straight, put them in there, get the jack, and you crimp it on there. That's how it works. And don't worry, we'll get into that because Eli Computer Guy has a video on how to do that. It's really easy. We actually have crimpers back at um, Mrs. Thor's room if you want to make your own cable. But um, you just buy these RJ45 jacks. You can get them anywhere. Well, not anywhere, but you know, basically Lowe's has them. 50 packs, 100 packs, whatever you need. Now, if you had a 50 pack, how many cables could you make with that? 50. 25, because there's two ends. Two each. I know. That was a little trick, trick question, not really. But Connor, he. It got me, yeah. Uh, it got him. Man. Speed! Okay, you guys want to know about the speed? We always talk, hey, I have a 10 gigabit connection at home. You're like, okay, that doesn't tell me anything, does it? Actually, yeah, it does if you know its speed. Speed is measured in megabits, capital M, lowercase b, because if this was a capital B, what would that be, Connor? Megabytes, right? Uh, yeah. But that's a lowercase b, so it's megabits. That's what you got to get into. Like Comcast, they say they got, they'll, they'll give you a 30 megabit per connection, basically, okay? A lot of people get confused and say, oh, that's 30 megabytes per second download. I'm like, no. You gotta know your connections. So, right here, 30 megabits does not equal 30 megabytes a second. Okay? You might want to write these down because these are I, I did I did these off my head. I had to calculate a little bit in my head. I actually used my calculator to calculate the, the speeds. I times them and all that, okay? One megabit equals 0 0.125 megabytes a second. So so one megabit is not even close to one megabyte, is it? It's like a fraction of it, okay? Now my internet at home, living in Ohio, only get five megabits per second down. And you can probably calculate that. That's not that fast. And I get 0 0.76 megabits up. You can probably be like, oh my gosh, that sounds like horrible. Yeah. One gigabit, oh yeah. One gigabit is 128 megabytes per second. Okay? You write all these down, you got 10 gigabit. And if you notice, 1024 megabits equals 1 gigabit. Okay? We only use 1000 in storage capacity, like hard drives, flash drives, that kind of thing. Makes sense? But in speed, we use the normal 1024. Okay? So, 10, you know, you basically understand, right? It's basically times each other. When you bump it up again, when you have um, 1,000 megabits, you have 1 gigabit. Make sense? It kind of just, it keeps, you know, it's like, it keeps going on and on. Now this speed right here, this was my old server. 
how, how, what would you compare that to? I would say, I got one gigabit down, you're probably like, holy crap, that's because it's a server and I, it was like 200 bucks a month, okay? Mm -hmm. I was hosting some, I was going to put Minecraft server on it, but you know, I wasn't into Minecraft at the time. I, I only play Minecraft that much, but I have it, you know, I used to be addicted to it, game. but you know. 254 megabits up. So you guys tell me how many megabytes is that down? It's not D. Okay. Brandon, how many mega 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 bytes is that down? Um, it's around. It's around 100 mega megabytes down. So a song file is three is, is around three or four megabytes. That speed is 100 megabytes in one second. Imagine. That's like three seconds. No, it's instant. That, that song you download is going to be instant. Okay? Now, ping. We'll get into ping. What is ping? Ping is basically network latency. How long it takes for, you, for your computer to connect to the other computer. Okay? How long does it take to go through all those wires and for that computer to be like, I, I see you. Right. So, we thank you. I'm going to say, Brandon, I'm going to say, Brandon, you're going to say, hey, as fast as you can. Right when you hear that, right when you get that, Brandon, okay? Brandon, hey. Brandon, hey. Okay? Now, ping is measured, measured in milliseconds, okay? A good ping is anywhere from 100 milliseconds down, okay? Like, my, my network was being crappy last night, and I was getting like 1,000 millisecond pings to Google, which is, that's getting close to one second. You guys might think one second to get from there to Google is, is good. It's not. We, we like stuff in milliseconds, especially when we're on Skype. To be on Skype, to have a good conversation, you got at least 70 milliseconds or below. Okay, two milliseconds, that's pretty, that's pretty. That's right to the remote server. It's like instant. That's like light. I, I've, I've been on, I've, um, with another server I've had, I've had one millisecond ping. Straight to a, straight to Google, straight to anything. Well, not anything because it really depends on the location, but yeah. I need that network. <laughs> okay? That's the DME hosting. I don't really like it anymore because there's, the, that was the beginning of this year. Their support kind of, kind of sucks. I'm sorry for saying that. It was to you guys. a second. But yeah. And that's, and my server was located in Denver, so I, I, um, went on speedtest.net. And I did a speed test to a Denver server, and that's why I got pretty good speeds. Okay? And I, I did Ohio. There was March 2nd. Mm -hmm. I, I did Ohio. I got like 60 megabits down. It's probably because Ohio has crappy internet. Huh. I did California. I got, I got about 800 megabits down. But yeah, it really depends. We'll, we'll get into this a little bit thicker because there's a lot of aspects that you You, you never you explained what okay. that 50 down, 20, or... Yeah, I don't 50, 50 down. 50, when people say I got 50 up, 50 down, 20 up, they're referring to megabits, okay? So 50 megabits. Do your calculations. You can do 0 0.125 times 50 and see how many megabytes they get, they get down per second, okay? And then the 20, 20 megabits. You, they time, you times that by 20. Why would you need two? Okay. Two different ones. Why you need 50 and 20? Because when you have internet, you have a download speed and upload speed. Right here. That's your download speed, that's your upload speed. Okay? So basically your internet so has two lines, okay? Just you gotta think about this. When you go to a site, you're downloading. When you're sending a question, you're uploading. When you're uploading a, when you're uploading a YouTube video, you're uploading. A lot of ISPs worry about the download speed, but hey, if you're hosting something or you're on Skype or something like that, up uh, you gotta care about the upload speed too. Big cost networking will give you 10 gig down, 10 gig up. Symmetrical. That's how we'll, that's how it will be. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's basically that's a one gigabit per next, one gigabit server right there. Okay, it's really nice. It was it was really nice until an asshole DDoSed it and got me um, kicked off of that hosting network. I can go with that later. But yeah. Okay, so you guys basically know speed, right? It's how fast your connection is. You have two speeds, a download speed and upload speed, okay? Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, if you go on CenturyLink, 
I think the fastest speed that you can get in Mount Vernon is like probably 10 megabits down, like 0.72 up. Okay? This is why I, I really hate the United States because their most ISPs suck, you know what. Have you guys heard of Verizon Fios? They offer 300 down, about 90 up. And my friend that lives in New Jersey, his name is George, but we all call him Kitty, that's his username. He, he's laughing because he, he can, he can, he, he, he showed us our speed. He's like downloading, he has movies and everything. He had like, he had like 200 movies downloaded in one day. And they were all full HD and everything. He was sitting there, he's like, oh yeah, I love my speed. I'm hosting, he's hosting, um, he's hosting a website from his house, everything. He has everything. So, and of course, Verizon Fios, it's fiber optic, okay? Now, fiber optic, we don't even have that in Columbus yet. If we do, it's a big business class and it costs a lot of money just to get a 100 megabit connection or 1 gigabit. You get me? Yeah. So, yeah. I pity, I pity our network infrastructure as it is because it's pretty crappy. That's why, if you're on land, you're, you're, you have it made because land, you know, it's pretty fast. Now, an ISP. Ooh, I, like, I pointed out Verizon. We can put Fios on that because that's probably the best ISP well, it is. That's the best ISP in the United States, okay? People in Romania, guess what their average internet speed is? Like, 4 gigabit. What? Gigabit. Now, this school's network, you want to know their, their speed? You might think it's fast. It's 30 megabit. 4 gigabit is the average home user speed in Romania. That's because the United States kind of sucks. That's why we all yell at them. With Verizon Files, they're like, oh, I know the United States sucks, but we'll, we'll give you some, a little bit of speed that you'll probably be happy with. And they, they, their top speed right now is 300 megabit. Okay? Jeez. So, these are the different internet service providers. you got DSL, that's over phone line. Now, we all want to get rid of the copper wire because that's becoming obsolete, okay? Because phone line uses copper wire. We don't we don't even need landlines anymore. But we, need, you know, the number one thing that we need at how, our house is an internet connection. That's all we need. We don't even need a cable for our cable TV because that stuff can be streamed over internet. All that can. You can do anything. You can stream movies. You can also watch stuff live. Anything. So, big cost networking. We will offer phone service. That will be over. That would be over the internet connection. We also offer TV, full HD, 3,000 channels, whatever you want. HBO, Cinemax, Sports Network, NASCAR. I don't know what Connor likes to watch. Cartoon Network, if you want that. Comedy Central. Comedy Central, full HD. MTV. But that's all you really need. Like, when I'm going to get a house, the only thing I'm really going to get is, well, I'm going to move somewhere where there's Verizon Fios. A house, do I need a mansion? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm actually going to move somewhere where I can get a better connection. And where would you think you'd get the best connection at? Usually bigger cities. Colorado. New Jersey. It's higher. Go to Romania. You can you can catch more. Usually places like New York, Columbus. Los Angeles, Columbus, Chicago, Columbus, no. Yeah, We're talking about mainframe. Dallas, Texas, or whatever. But you, you, Miami. Can I get it? Miami? Sorry. I think there's actually Fios in Miami. I'm not sure. But Verizon said... You're not wearing shoes. You guys, Verizon yeah, said so. that they're going to bring Fios to Ohio. That is they said that 10 <laughs> years ago, guys. Guys, you hear me? You want to know why we don't have Verizon Fios in Ohio? Because AT&T okay. AT says that, hey, Columbus is our area. This is our, our zone. Stay out. This is, we, we, this is we, our neighborhood. We provide internet here. And AT&T kind of sucks. If you know what I mean, they do. They suck. Okay, they so suck. we want we want this Verizon files to be kicking in Ohio, and I've actually called Verizon and I'm telling them, hey, bring bring that connection to my house. You actually called them? Yeah, I'm like bring that connection to my yeah. house. <laughs> I live in Ohio. I told them the address. They're like they're like, we'll put it on the charts. We'll see what we can do in the next five years. I'm like, well, we need everybody wants Verizon files in Ohio. Okay. Now, what about the school's internet? I told you how, how fast the school's internet is, right? Yeah, 30 three. megabit. 30, okay? That's what we did on speed, did speed test later. Like 10 up. That's pretty, is that kind of piss poor? 
but it kind of does. It kind of does what it needs to because what do teachers usually do? Just check their email, check the news, that kind of stuff, right? We're not streaming media, we're not doing anything hardcore, but hey, you want a good network background, you know? It's not professional okay. quality. You also have cable, like Comcast, Time Warner, etc. Which Time Warner is also, their internet service is called Roadrunner. Now, the thing about cable is, whoa, man. Sorry. Is the connection. Yeah, you just need to do that. <laughs> okay, guys. Pay attention here, or I want to get more stuff in. Okay, sir. The thing about cable is the connection is not really reliable. You know why? Because I know somebody that's on Comcast, and I know somebody that's on Roadrunner. If they were on my network, they would ping, like, every five seconds. That would mean their, their internet disconnects constantly. <laughs> that's my internet. And that, that's, that's because... Okay, <laughs> guys. Bring it in. Kind of doing a presentation. That's because their internet was on cable. Let me tell you something about cable. Okay? Cable, that cable line that's running down your street, that bandwidth is shared with all your neighbors. So say your neighbor's over there, he's torrenting, he's downloading tons of movies. <laughs> your internet is going to get a lot slower. But on DSL, that phone line goes straight to that server and you get your own bandwidth. But actually the bandwidth, if somebody's lo overloading that um, server, then yeah, your internet might be a little bit slower. Fiber! This is what Verizon 5 uses. Who wants fiber? I do. I do. Fiber! Fiber optic. Is, is a it's basically a dedicated line. You have your own bandwidth. You don't have to worry about speed. Verizon says you're going to get one gigabit out of your house. You're going to get it. You're going to get it, man. Hey, I got to call somebody. You don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about the person across the, across the road downloading porn and all that stuff look, slowing down the internet. It's not going to slow yours down. It might slow theirs down. Probably because they're on Comcast or something. Right. Not gonna slow yours down. T1. A lot, a lot of businesses say, "Oh, I have a big T1 line." You want to know something about T1? Connor, do you think T1 is the best? Nope. T1 was obsolete ten years ago. You want to know why? Why? When there was dial-up, T1 existed, and T1 blew dial-up out of the out of the water. It's like, whoa, that thing's fast. That's because. Jeez. That's because. It was only 1.5 megabits per second down, and 1.5 megabits per second up. And plus, you had to have eight so cables good. going to your this, is that good? You know. To your thing, that's that's horrible. <laughs> T1, T1, and you want to know something else about T1? It starts at like 600 per month. Verizon Files, guess how much Kitty pays for his internet? Probably around 100 bucks, really. Hmm. And that's and he's getting more speeds than I. Oh, playing search for like for five megabits, and this is oh my god, it's like. It's a, it's a, it's about hundred bucks too. Huh. I used to pay like seventy dollars a month. Huh. But still, you're probably getting. That's pretty. For getting century, ripped off for century living. You're getting still getting ripped off. Okay. So T1. Oh, I got a big T1. One line at the. We have a T1 line here at the high school. I'd be like, that sucks. That that's really piss poor. I'd rather go get get a Comcast line better than that thing. You know. T1 obsolete ten years ago. And plus. If you wanted phones, you'd have to use some of that bandwidth for your phone, so you'd probably get like 0 0.5 megabits down. And I told you at my home I have DSL and I get 5 megabits down. That's 0 0.5. So that's T1, okay? Yeah, that's horrible. T1. Hey, I got big T. I got T1 in my house. <laughs> We're business. We pay 800 bucks a month for it. 800. That's how much T1 costs. Really? Because T1 is like a dedicated line to exchange point. But still, you're not getting the speed you want. I mean, come on. Now, there are things called T3 and etc. But we're not going to get into those because those are also a ripoff too. <laughs> so, T1. Is it good, guys? Nah. I don't think it is. It's awesome. So, there's your ISPs. You got this written down? Did you put down T1 equals, you know what? <laughs> dog poo. You put dog poo. Whiteboard, explain how you connect to your ISP. It's not just, I have my... Modem I connect to my ISP. Well, there's different ways of connecting to your ISP, right? They're gonna send you something. Where, where are they gonna send you? What are they gonna send you? Yeah. Where are they gonna send you? They're not gonna send you a computer to get on the internet. They're gonna send you something to get on the internet. What is that, Connor? I mean, come on. My router. <coughs> they can send you a router. Modem. But I'd prefer you go out and buy a $200 on a nice router, like my friend did. 
he got a deal link that was like 200 bucks, and guess how far his Wi-Fi went with that thing? 300 feet. It went pretty far, like literally, I was like down the road at McDonald's, and I was still on his Wi-Fi, and he was like clear down the road. <laughs> so, but yeah, of course, I knew how to secure his network. There's ways to secure in your Wi-Fi network. I, we'll go into that later if you want to know how. I can make it you work. Always say that. I can wait. I can forget it. Don't worry. How about you write me a note and say, "Hey, you told me we're going to teach you about Wi-Fi net, secure Wi-Fi network." Show okay. me. Okay. I shall. But um, yeah, I can I can tell you. Hey, there's there's probably five Wi-Fi networks here, but they're secured. That's why you can't see them. Yeah, this isn't recording, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> Red light. It is. So made you look. So please don't mess with that. Okay. Just noise talk. So how do you do? You connect to your ISP. Well, you have that. You get a modem, right? And if it's Verizon FiOS, what are you gonna have? A fiber line, right? Fiber, fiber optic line. Good. Yeah, it's fiber. You can also call it fiber. When people across the across the country say fibery or like that, we we just Mexican. we switch the, we, we switch we switch the R and put E R fiber. Okay. But I know people that call it fibery. That's how they do it in their country. Fiber. Now, when you connect, let me explain how your modem connects to their server. There's different ways. They can use DHCP. Let's talk about that, okay? So your modem is going to dial in. It's going to listen on that on that fiber line for a DHCP server. When it finds it, that DHCP server is going to be like, "Hi, modem." That modem is going to give it its MAC address. And all that, all the info that needs, okay. And then that DHCP server, which is the, the ISP server, is going to give the IP address. It's going to sign an IP address to that modem. It's going to sign its DNS and all that stuff. Makes sense? You might want to write this stuff down because you guys might think this is mind-boggling. But hey, you might think you know it now. But hey, down the road you probably won't. You better repeat that. <laughs> There's other ways to connect to an ISP, such as static ways. I think it's PPoE. And then what you do Hello. is you. You configure it for a username and password, and you basically Happy you have birthday. a Brent. <laughs> you can get a stack IP. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah? Uh, I'm at school right now. I'm so let's talk about IP addresses first. Okay. Conference room. Okay. <laughs> IP addresses. How to meeting with teachers. <laughs> What's an IP address do? Does anybody know? Tell them how to draw. It identifies each device on a network. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, Connor? Man, each thing that connects to the school's network has an IP address. This iPod does. Okay? So if I want to ping that laptop, I can see how long it takes my iPod to connect to that laptop oh, on the network. How would I do that? Basically, think about houses. You have a house you have a house address, right? That's how you know where to go, right? That's the same thing. It identifies the house, it, divide, it identifies where you gotta go, right? Oh my, yeah. This is, now this like, right here. Uh, is that the one with the daughters? Oh yeah, that's by inside, so. Oh yeah, I'm um, street care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can smack it. Brandon, tell your mom or whoever it is that you're you're in a big you're in a big meeting. This is life or death. Friday. It's basically yeah. Us. yeah, we don't have yeah. school Friday. Yes, I know that. It's called a calendar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now we're gonna just go to school. And I want to teach, but I know Brandon's on the phone. So Brandon, you need to like step out of the door and talk to whoever you are, or Tell them that you're in a you're in, you're in a class, man. What? You're gonna hurt Victor's feelings. Go. Now, an IP address consists of four octets. Do you guys know what octets are? Um, I don't think so. There's numbers. Well, they're like sections. Sections. Rather. So, what would the four octets of this IP oh, before address be? That makes me math makes math makes math. She never that tells me anything. And then, you know, she... Okay. That's my whole set. It's totally... It's not... Totally Four old. octets would be... One... Two... Three... Four! Okay? Alright. 
Now this address down here is an IPv6 address. We'll get into that. And Brandon gets off his phone. So the two versions that are out are IPv4 and IPv6. What's the V6 stand for? Version 6. Alright. Bye. Brandon, what was that about, man? <laughs> it's my aunt's birthday today. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. Did you catch any of this? Yeah. Sound like your mom. Okay. Key address too. Each device on the network must have an IP address, or you cannot connect or communicate via a network. Okay? This address right here, 6699470, that was an old server of mine. That's not 4970. Yep. <laughs> this right here is an IPv4 address. What is the most common addresses that we use? IPv4. Alright, let's see if I can remember that whole phrase at the bottom. This down here is an IPv6. I think I can do it. Okay? IPv6 is a new internet protocol address. Everybody says, oh, the internet's going to end because we're all switching to IPv6. Well, at the rate we're going, we're not going to be using IPv6 for about 10 years. Okay? So, I haven't really studied much of IPv6, and I don't think you guys need to either. At least not yet. Because that address, does that look confusing? No. No. I don't think I can remember that. I already know it. Give me about... You know that? Give me you about know how that address is made up? Yeah. Do you know the, the binary of that address? Yeah, I already know the consistency of it. Really? That's no, awesome, no, Connor. No, okay. uh, you sound me, confident. How about what? you come up to the board and tell me about this yeah. IPv6 address? Wait a second. <laughs> give me two minutes. I'll remember all those numbers without the colons. Well, you need the colons because that's that's how the address works. That's how it's broken up right, into octets. All right, let me do it then. Give me about two minutes. So, this right Ten here. I can memorize that. So. That's what an IPv. That's what. An, IP address looks like in binary. And guess what, guys? You're gonna know how you're gonna know how to put an IP address in binary. You're probably like, "Holy crap, that sounds like Albert Einstein." It's not. Not if you know how to write notes, and not if you know to focus. how to do basic math. What's one plus one? Three. You don't know how to do basic math, so I think you're gonna four. fail this class. Two, four, four. <laughs> so, two. The IP address range. Who wants to know what the IP address range that you can use? Well, you have 0 .0 Okay? Now, if you guys want to pick up more about an IP address, Connor even knows that I have a video all about it and how to put it in binary and all that, don't I? Mm. Which Mrs. Orr was supposed to show, wasn't she, Connor? We told her about it. Yep. Custom it, yeah. But she did it. No, I, the only word I said, I, I said the end, I said kick ass, okay? But come on. <laughs> He's finishing, he's like, alright, I'm good. Kick ass. <laughs> when you're done with the slide, give me about two minutes. You have something called a local IP, <laughs> external IP. What's that mean? Because I typed this whole PowerPoint by myself, but like, you know, I, I, actually, I even told Connor I did some of it, I added some slides on it last night. Well, a local IP address would be the IP address that you have on the LAN network. Okay? External is what IP address you're identified as when you connect to an external network, such as the internet. Okay? I bet Connor, he's, he's writing all that stuff. He's probably taking the words out of my mouth and putting them on that paper. No, it's, it's going in my mind. <laughs> it's going in your mind. Good job. So, octets. What are octets? Well, an IP address you have three dots, right? That's two. That's a separated array, okay? You have the first one. That's one octet. You have two octets. Three, and then four, okay? Hence why it's called IPv4, okay? IPv6, don't get me started on that. I have not really studied that much, okay? An IPv6. Yes, I have a few servers that have IPv6, and if you want to be on IPv6, you can um, tunnel to get an IPv6 address, but we're not going to go into it because IPv6 can probably blow you guys' mind, especially if you don't know this kind of networking. If you don't, if you don't even know version 4, 
I don't think you want to just jump into version six because version six, take it easy. we don't even use it much yet. Okay, it's not. It's like, this is like this is like future stuff right here. Okay, so the basic stuff you got to know is IPv4. Okay. All right. Give me two minutes. Okay. Well, I'm gonna switch aside here in a second, so you better hit, take a snapshot a little bit or right, something. Right. <laughs> but um, let's get into this deeper. Okay. You're probably like, holy cow, what is this? Nope, not really. <laughs> this right here, down here, is how we break up binary. Okay? So I'm going to show you how we do this without sh trying to hide my shadow. You have 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. With these numbers, you can you can get any possible number from 0 to 255 out of, okay? What happens if you add up all those numbers? You get 255. That is why the largest number in an IP address is 255. It's because of binary, okay? So, let's spice this up a little bit because I'm cool like that. Binary. You only have ons and offs, right? I bet you guys learned some of this in Mr. Thor's class, right? So you have, we have an on. We have an off. An on, off, 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 on, off. That's binary right there. One, zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero. How would we get an IP address out of that? Well, if you have a calculator, anybody have a calculator with them? How do you even come up with that? Anybody have a calculator with them? Nope. What you do is you add up the numbers that are on. So 128 plus 32 is 62. Plus 2. Is that 62? 162. 162. So then, your first decimal is 162 in, uh, for your IP address. That, that's the first octet of your IP address. You're probably like, oh, that's kind of making sense, isn't it? So then, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. I totally missed that. Probably had too much something. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to slap you, Brandon. Okay. <laughs> too much something. Now. I like, did you see all that just erased? Yeah. I hate I hate this this board kind of takes me off a little bit because it likes to erase on me. So our first one was 62. Let's do our next. Guys, calm down. I know it's funny, funny, funny. Okay. But <laughs> uh, 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 read the book. Everybody belches. <laughs> Does that exist? <laughs> Probably. Okay. So let's do our let's do our second octet. How many octets are there in the IP address? Four. Four. Good job. Are you writing this down, Brandon, or are you just like sucking it all in? That's good. It's coming to me. It's okay. It's easy. What would the next 72. octet be? 72! You are good at math. Okay? Let's do another octet, okay? So we have 62, 72. That didn't erase. That's pretty cool. Well, if it does, then this, this smart word needs to be punched because it's it's malfunctioning. <laughs> okay, let's do our next octet, right? Oh, shit. Serious right now. Five twenty or two fifty five. Two fifty five. And our next one. Zero. So that is how you put binary into a IP address. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. I feel like I'm sorry. But now, how would you convert that back? Well, yeah. How would? So would you just? I'm gonna put an IP address in binary. This is probably gonna make Carter's mind blow. So. We have this down here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because eight bits equals one byte, right? So six, seven, eight. There's there's some binary right there, okay? Now let me do some more. There's another one. That's two octets. Okay, let's do another one. There's another one. 
Okay? Three octets. So now, who wants to convert that into an IP address? 142. You're basically seeing what ones are on and what number that would reside with. 160. Sorry. It's 163. Sorry. 163. Mm -hmm. See, he's actually doing. Are you doing this or are you just watching? I'm just watching. Come on, genius, right, Brandon. <laughs> By the way, I don't, I don't know what that is. 142. Again? Wait, hold on. For, no, I'm doing this again. 42. 148. This is 148? No, third one. 148. And... One. Basically, it's hard, right? That's why the computer does it, but you basically know how it works, right? Yeah. Binary. 8 bits equals 1 byte. Okay? Hence why there's 8 numbers. What they'll do is those 8 bits. With those 8 bits, that 1 byte, the computer will translate that into a decimal. And whatever that decimal is used for, we'll put in the, you know, terms. Like that Y button might be decimal... 70, 72 or something. Um, but for IP addresses, decimal works the same way. Makes sense? How that works? Do you, um, do you have a calculator? Oh, you got a calculator on my phone. You don't have to calculate I have an this. idea how you could put it into. I think that's, this is how they do it. They take. What is it? 255 the max? Is, it, is that what it is? 255 is the max because right. what's, 255. What, what happens if you add up all these numbers? 255. 255, and you can't go over it. Okay. Okay, now. Would you divide that by, well, there's 26 letters in our alphabet, so you would divide that by 26, and then every, about, almost about every 10 points, there'd be a letter. So 0 to 10 would be A, 11 to 21 would be B, and then 22. Okay. Let's focus on IP addresses now. <laughs> it's telling you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. So now, how they, how they convert. Have you this is what I did last night. Okay? So an IP address identifies the device on the network. Okay? okay. Then you have ports. We're not talking about a ship port. Why not? Okay? I know. <laughs> That's a beautiful picture of Seattle. Okay? You guys might want to write this down. Mm -hmm. It's like Pittsburgh. Well, they said on Google it was Seattle. Seattle. <laughs> so, ports. You have an IP address, right? Well, associated with that IP address you got, you got to make your connections somehow. That's because you got ports, okay? So imagine, here's your computer, okay? Ports, basically portals, used to make a connection, okay? Like a web server runs off of port 80. So the computer will listen on that port, you connect to that port, okay? So ports. Associate with your IP address, you have ports. Portal to a service. Different types of ports. You have TCP, TCP, and UDP. Transmission control protocol, user datagram protocol. Okay? TCP is the most widely used. What would, you, would, what would we use UDP for? <coughs> Real time communication, such as Skype. Oh, okay. okay. Real time communication, such as Skype. Your port range. Is one to sixty-five thousand five hundred thirty-five. Yes. Okay. What, what about port zero? Can we use port zero? No. So you might want to write that down. Port zero is reserved 
You know what it's reserved for? It's reserved for TCP IP communications. That's what port zero is reserved for, strictly for. But all these other ports you can you can use, okay? Make it sense a little bit. Dude, we gotta dress up tomorrow. Why? Because it's dress up Thursday. Every Thursday night I gotta dress up really nice. Connor, you got the stuff down? Yeah, but you're, but you're wearing dress shoes now. Okay, Connor. Okay. Connor, you have a pair of dress shoes. Let's get into this deeper. Connor. What are the most common ports? Here's a list of them 20 FTP, 22 Secure Shell, 23. Don't get ahead of yourself. Okay? Ports continue. SSH, you guys know what SSH is? It's used. <laughs> SSH is basically getting a remote connection to a server. Remote terminal connection, basically. I can get into that later. But I use SSH a lot. So, you got 20. That's for, that's for transferring FTP files. 21 is basically the login and control of the FTP. Okay? That's file transfer. 22 is the secure shell, which is SSH. Also uses for F SFTP, which is basically file transfer over SSH. Okay? We gotta go. Soon. No, like right now. <laughs> You're like six minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Look I at Connor. I gotta get my stuff. I gotta put all this stuff away. Connor, you got my system. <laughs> I don't got any of that done. Down. Well, it's still up there. You, uh, you, can, <laughs> and you can still write it down. These are most common ports. Most remember, remember where I left off on was at the ports, okay? Where are we so that's where I left off on. You get to see a little bit behind the scenes um, cleaning up action, right? Connor, wave hi to the people out there. He looks he looks like he's brainwashed or something. Oh, do you want a party afterwise? Afterwards? I guess. Go ahead. You you gotta do it you gotta do it quickly. Turn on the lights, somebody. Connor, you wanna turn the lights on? Turn the lights on. I think we got like three minutes left on this camera to film. <laughs> So you might as well Why can't I exit out of this? Click, click no on that. Oh, okay. Then exit out of there. Yeah. It's not exiting out. Clicking it. Uh, it's probably because it wants to be done. Watch the cables now. Beep. I know. Click no. Don't save. I can't. It's probably, it's probably frozen. Don't save. <laughs> but did you guys get a little bit brainwashed today? Yeah. A little bit. Say so what? You want to party tomorrow? Yeah. We gotta clean this stuff up, man. Dude, your break comes out here like full late tomorrow. You gotta dress up tomorrow, right? Is this off? You will. You will. So Connor, mm -hmm. you know this. You know how the stuff I went over there, or you just like uh, sinking it in. I'm just taking it there. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to get too advanced on you guys because I can go into like how how like in deep how you connect to your ISP and how an IP IP before works and all that, but. I don't want to extremely brainwash you guys, so I'm trying to make it really simple. Brainwash us. Well, that leaves us with those contacts. 